With his thumb, he was playing what the left hand on the piano does. See that? So I'm playing the bass and I'm spelling out the chord with my thumb. My fingers are not doing anything. My thumb's doing it all, you watch. See that? So I can hear he's doing that, but then he's so clever. He played the melody at the same time, like this. Everything's covered. So I heard him do that, and I was inspired. And I, whatever, whatever I could do to find out how to do that was what I needed to do. So I set about trying to remember what I'd heard on the radio. And so, and I was still playing with one of these, which is what we call a plectrum, or if you're from America, a straight pick. Okay, so. I figured out how to go with a straight pick and then make my fingers do that. See that? But it was difficult to try and do that because of only having these fingers. So I then saw a photograph of my hero, Chet Atkins, playing the guitar and he was wearing one of those. And I went, you know that's why Italians have flat foreheads and short necks? <laughs> it is because you ask them a question and they go, and then you tell them the answer and they go, ah. <laughs> so short necks, flat foreheads. Anyway, moving right along. You can get all sorts of sounds out of guitar, you know? You watch this. See that? Mm. You can get all sorts of sounds. <laughs> anyway, so, so I got myself a thumb pick and I got to work. Now I want to tell you something. So at that time we were living up in North Queensland on a sugarcane farm and playing in a band on the weekends and stuff like that. But I want to tell you that many years later I met that man. I met my hero in 1980 and I got to know him. And I want to tell you that he told me the same thing that happened to me happened to him. Uh, he was 10 years old and he was living on a farm with his dad and his stepmom and he tuned in the radio and he heard a man named Merle Travis on the radio playing in that way and he said whatever that is that's what I've got to do. He had exactly the same experience that I had. And, not only that, but he used the same words. Whatever that is, that's what I've got to do. And so it set him on a course too. And, but of course I didn't realize that it happened when I was young. All I was interested in was learning the next song and being a better player and having more songs to play. So, I wrote a fan letter to my, to my idol. I wrote a fan letter to him and I put on the envelope, Chet Atkins, Nashville, America. <laughs> Boom, that's it. No postcode, no nothing, just that. And I put it in the letterbox and do you know what? Two months later, I got a letter back from him. I was 11 years old at this time and there was a big black and white photograph signed to Tommy. Best wishes, Chet Atkins. I can't tell you how excited I was that my hero wrote back to me, wow! And then years later, of course, 
I got to meet him. And you know, when I listened to his music when I was a little boy, I felt like I knew him because I listened